Hi everybody, Shannon Petrovich with Therapist Talks. The roller coaster of emotions when involved with a narcissist and strategies for getting free. Being involved with someone with narcissistic personality is a confusing and often overwhelming experience. The roller coaster ride starts out as exciting with great anticipation of it being really exhilarating and fun. The gnarly turns and careening downhills are exciting and you know in the back of your mind that some but he must have passed some safety checks or inspections at some point, so it should be okay. But when the relationship with the narcissist gets into those wild turns and stomach lurching downhills, you begin to realize you are not safe. This ride has no inspections and your emotions are not being cared for or cared about. And these wild elements of the ride are really dangerous to you. But every time it seems to slow down enough to get off, the ride is fun again. The narcissist realizes you're getting ready to get off and ramps up the manipulations to keep you on and go around again. What keeps you in the seat going around and around again? And how can you fully realize what's going on and get off for good? During the love bombing, you're over the moon with a joyful exuberance and anticipation. The narcissist is noticing and mirroring all your likes and dislikes. They praise your traits and love your foibles. They support you and encourage you. You feel heard and cared about and known and loved. If you're keenly aware, you might also feel a bit overwhelmed and smothered. You may think this is too good to be true. This phase can last a short bit or a real long time, depending on the narcissist's style and functioning, but also on how easily you're drawn in. Then gradually, the narcissist feels they have you hooked and they begin to form the foundation of the trauma bonding. They do this by gradually gaslighting, devaluing, and creating a growing sense of dependence. The gaslighting is to make you feel off kilter and off balance, and even like you're not quite in touch with reality. It's also to cover any wrongdoing of their part. When they're unfaithful and you're upset, they will sell you you're jealous. The devaluing is to put you into a less than frame of mind, so you're easily controlled when they build you up, and all of this leads to more and more dependence on them. A really skilled narcissist will create such self-doubt in you that you never see or feel any negativity from them. You actually feel the negativity towards yourself only, and you even thank them for being so wonderful that they would put up with you and love you, even for your terrible flaws and lack of appeal to anyone else. Over time, you begin to feel you're not very smart, not very attractive, not completely sane, and overall that maybe this person is the only person who will ever truly love you since you are really not that lovable. All narcissists then use the tantrum, either in an implosive or explosive way, to put you in your place if you're starting to stray, to get your attention back on them, and to regain control. These strategically expressed tantrums indoctrinate you into, new, into your new jobs, which include placating, soothing, enabling, and smoothing out the world for the narcissist. When you don't offer everything they want in the way they want, in the time frame they want, they will ramp up the pressure with their threats of a tantrum or maybe the full-blown episode to make sure that you never want to upset them again. The tantrum, the threat of the next tantrum, and the avoidance of tantruming keeps you on that roller coaster that is now no longer fun. Often those with a covert narcissist don't see the implosive tantrum as a tantrum, but it is. Though they tend to be more internal, the implosion has the same effect. It's just more manipulative the feel sorry for me, the threat, the threat that they will implode into that deep, dark depression when they don't get their way. They can deteriorate all the way to suicidality from the slightest slight, and they too will gradually train you to do what they want in order to avoid roller coastering into that dark tunnel. The ups and downs of this roller coaster are not only crazy making, but the mix of devaluing and blame shifting means that you are taking on more and more ownership of their explosions and implosions. This takes those feelings of self-doubt and shoots them off those cliffs towards self-hatred. You're starting to feel if, the, if you could just get it right, they, things would go back to the way they were, which was that wonderful love bombing phase. What you really need to realize is that phase was completely fake and this is the norm for this relationship with this person. It will never go back because that was designed to hook you and was never real to begin with. This self-hatred is then so malleable for the narcissist that they use it to put you and keep you down. If you start to get sick of it all and sick of them and pull away, they will begin their devaluing statements 
the, um, to put you down and use all their games to keep you under their control. Sometimes if they really think you've gone too far, they may throw in a little love bombing to hook you back in. But remember, this is just the same manipulation, recycled when needed. In addition, the narcissist gradually isolates you and causes separation from those you love and support, and who support you, and also from the activities that used to give you joy. Your passions, your pastimes, your friends and family, they all have to take a back seat to the narcissist. And gradually, they all fade into the background of the scenery that goes flying by in your peripheral vision from the seat of your roller coaster. As much as you want to keep those people and activities in your life, the tantrums are just not worth it. So you let go and focus more and more on the narcissist's moods and needs. As time goes on and these games keep you on this emotional roller coaster, your emotions get more and more convoluted. Many people fall into depression and anxiety in varying degrees. Feelings of hopelessness, helplessness, not being interested in things that used to interest you, isolation, anxiety over what might happen next, stress, and that constant nagging that if you could just do it all right and make them happy with you, your relationship would be perfect again. So what do you do? This emo emotional roller coaster has no end and it will keep going around until you simply get off. How do you do that? Number one, tell yourself the truth. This is never going to be a healthy relationship and your only option to save yourself and your sanity is to get off the ride. You didn't cause this person's problems and you certainly can't cure them. This truth will come and go unless you make it a solid commitment to yourself and you follow through. The best way to do this is of course to have your own therapist. If you can't do that, then engage a friend or family member that you trust to help you. You have to start by telling that person the entire truth. Writing your truth down in a journal is also a good strategy so you can refer back to it when your wishful thinking takes hold again. Number two, armed with that truth, make a plan. Put safety first and listen to others if they have a different perception on the real safety concerns. Often others have a more realistic perception of the safety concerns than you do at this point. The manipulations and trauma bonding make it difficult for you to make accurate assessment of the likely outcome of you getting out. When you create a plan, tell your safe person your plan. The details of this plan are, of course, individual, so I can't give a lot of detail on this format. But think it through and write it down and run it by your safe person for help and clarity. Number three, make it a clean and clear break. The roller coaster has hooked your emotions like a drug addict is hooked on the drug of their choice. You will feel like you want to re-engage or hear them out or try one more time but your feelings are just feelings and they will pass. Think of your emotions as an addiction to that person and to the ride itself, and do not let your feelings dictate your actions. The feelings don't fit the facts. The feelings are telling you all kinds of things to get you back into the situation and back on that ride. The facts will tell you to stay away. You need to use the facts in this situation and stick close to those facts. This is the more, most crucial step and where most people end up back on the ride. In our culture, we are told to trust our feelings, but in this situation, that's the worst advice ever. Trust the facts, and when in doubt, go back to your journal or listen to your safe person to remind you of the facts. Number four, if you have to have contact, always keep it clean and clear. For example, we will meet at the library to exchange the kids and I won't talk to that person. I'll bring my best friend with me who won't let me get sucked in. Number five, sit back, Emotionally separate yourself and watch the ride go by. When you get off the roller coaster, watch. The narcissist will do all the same games and will likely ramp up all of them a notch or two. Do they start to hook up with someone else and start love bombing them to make you jealous? Do they love bomb you and then pepper you with all sorts of devaluing to make you feel you're never going to find anyone else who will love you like I do or put up with what I put up with? Just watch from a safe and sane distance and recognize all of those manipulations and just say to yourself, oh, there's that devaluing. Oh, now there's more love bombing and sprinkle it with a little anger, a little explosion and implosion to freak me out and get me back onto the roller coaster. Watch and notice and stay in your safe, sane place with your feet on the ground. Number six, don't get back on that ride. And if you slip and get back on, get back off quickly. Recognize it sooner and get off faster. The roller coaster of emotions you feel when in relationship with a narcissist are a confusing array of excitement, exhilaration, 
terror, self-doubt, self-hatred, helplessness, hopelessness, anxiety, and even depression. And many get on that ride and can't find their way off for many years. When you see it and you feel those emotions, know that this is not what a healthy relationship is like and get yourself off as soon as you can. Your physical and emotional health and sanity depend on it. If you've appreciated this video, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. Take good care of yourselves, and I'll talk to you again soon.